I'm gonna talk a little bit to start, kick us off today about um, what OpenShift Commons is and why we call it Commons and not Foundation or Meetup or anything else like that. So I'm just gonna try and explain um, how this group of people here, these peers that you're in the room with, um, are gonna be some of the most important people you meet all year. So as I said, um, this is gonna be talking about making all those connections across the cloud native ecosystem. So what is OpenShift Commons? It's a slightly different variation on open source communities. In the past, communities were really, uh, and for open source projects, were all about trying to get you to contribute code to my repo. Not Tanya repo, but the repo. And um, what we had to do when we shifted to Kubernetes, when we re-architected OpenShift on top of Kubernetes, is it changed everything. Because now Red Hat was contributing code to Kubernetes and lots of other upstream projects, so our relationships exploded. Numbers of, you know, the number of people we were in connection with and the change in architecture meant we had to re-educate everyone who was already using OpenShift to understand what this thing Kubernetes was, um, and that was like a fire hose of new information. So we created a new communications channel, so if you haven't seen them yet, we'll show you how to find them, but we do two briefings a week, usually when I'm home or somewhere um, where I have a good Wi-Fi connection, um, and I do briefings and all kinds of stuff um, to reach out to the over 500 members, organizations um, of the OpenShift Commons. And these are people who are users, service providers, cloud hosts, um, upstream project things. You can go to the website openshiftcommons.org um, and see a whole list of people. And you should recognize yourself, and many of you are already meant part of that. So it's really a new community model. Um, it's not a foundation. We didn't set up a foundation for OpenShift, thank goodness, because there's CNCF now. Um, but we do commons briefings, we do gatherings like this, we do three major ones a year at KubeCons, the CNCF KubeCon events, and um, we do briefings every week. There are a lot of special interest groups, so if there's a topic you're interested in, talk to me during the breaks and I'll hook you up. If you join, we'll put you right into the Slack channel and on the mailing list, and there's always code con contributions, because we never say no to that. But there is a Red Hat channel, um, that's all things OpenShift, and all things OpenShift Commons, all the briefings are there. I think I've talked to over 200 people now and done 200 briefings, so it's lots of stuff. Um, Amadeus, who's talking, is in there. All the briefings from today will be there. We have, again, a Slack channel. We have an upcoming event. So again, commons.openshift.org is where you'll find all of that. And I'd highly encourage you to, if you haven't joined yet, and you may have, your company may have joined and you might not have noticed yet, so go to the participants list and if you are, just fill out the form and we'll automatically add you to the mailing list in the Slack channel. But if you haven't, please do fill out the form today um, at commons.openshift.org, hashtag or pound sign, join, and join us and join in these conversations because that's one of the ways that you'll all stay connected with each other after today. So today is all about facial recognition. You didn't know you were going to an AI or a machine learning summit, no. This is all about you looking at the person next to you, meeting them, shaking their hand, talking to them, and finding something in common. This is about me being on the community development side, not being able to remember all of your names and all of your faces, but trying to make some human connections with each other. So today is really about peer-to-peer -peer networking. So it's different than your ordinary corporate event. What we really want you to do is make 10 new friends today. And I'll explain why. Because at Red Hat, um, if you've been to any corporate event um, over the past few years, you've heard someone say, open source is in our DNA. And you'll see this nice little diagram. And there are over 96 million repositories in GitHub and I think that's 2018, and there's probably another 100,000 more at the rate they're expanding. And lots of them are part. And DNA is a nicely structured thing. We can decode it and do all of that stuff and figure it out. But communities 
are much more like jellyfish. Or as someone told me in Italian, they're called Medusa. Is that correct? Medusa, yeah, kind of scary a little bit, I think. I think of the scary goddess. I'll explain what I mean. It's all about our relationships to other projects and other people. So some of the work that we do um, on the community development side allows me to have access to all of the GitHub contributions, all of the Stack Overflow, all of that um, wonderful information. And what we are able to do is um, clean all that up and do some identity mergers and create these beautiful, I call them jellyfish diagrams, that show us um, how people who are working on OpenShift are connected and also contributing to Kubernetes, um, how they're connected to other projects like Jaeger and Open Tracing or Linkerd and Prometheus. Each one of these pink dots represents a person and the connections in between. So you start to see how all of these other projects, besides just OpenShift and Kubernetes, impact and how we can find in, we have this idea of six degrees of separation. There aren't even six degrees of separation in this di diagram. They are like the tentacles of the jellyfish. They're amorphous, they float, people move from one project to another. It's really been a very interesting thing to go from being one project centric to multiple projects that we have to collaborate with. There we go. So um, when we talk about it, we're talking about open source. Um, we do have corp um, uh, products, of course. We're talking about lots of open communities, tons of them that we have to do, and a lot of collaboration that we have to do in the open. And I would have that those connections between people and those jellyfish tentacles are really the connections that drive the innovation into all of these projects. So if I need a new feature in etcd, I need to have a relationship to that project. I need to have a relationship to the customers that are using it, that are making the request. And so today, really, if you remember one thing is like on Facebook, it's complicated, but it's all about the relationships. So let me step back a little bit. Um, OKD, if you didn't know, um, is the we rebranded OpenShift Origin, the open source project to OKD. Um, it doesn't stand for anything specifically because of lots of reasons, but legally, Kubernetes is a brand that's owned by the CNCF, so you'll see things like GKS or PKS or all other things. We all have to just say that. But basically, OpenShift has become a function of Kubernetes plus a lot of other things. So OKD is basically a community distribution of Kubernetes, and it's the one that powers OpenShift. Um, everything is still in a repo called Origin. Um, and the participation today um, is what really has been driving actual contributions. So even though I say I don't really care about whether you contribute to OKD itself, um, surprisingly, um, there have been a, there's a huge uptick in people contributing and organizations contributing to it. So the majority of the work on OpenShift Origin and OKD, as it's now called, has been done by Red Hatters. Um, and now most of those Red Hatters are contributing in, in the upstream to Kubernetes, so anyone who's using Kubernetes gets the benefits of that. But we do have um, still a very viable OKD working group that still is making efforts, and Christian Glombach, is he here today? He hasn't probably arrived yet. He's coming from the Berlin office. Hopefully he shows up. He has a talk this afternoon. And I um, are the co-chairs of the OKD working group. So if you're interested in co contributing to OKD, um, and OKD4 is what we're focusing on right now, is getting this operator-centric one running on Fedora CoreOS, um, the open source version of RHEL CoreOS. Please join the working group and, um, or talk to me in the hallway. Because really, um, for me, all of the future of all of this continuous innovation, whether it's in OpenShift or Prometheus or Service Mesh or Knative or any of that, is really about the cross-community collaboration. Because when we think about contributing and collaborating in the upstream, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of projects that get integrated into OpenShift and to, that come out in the container platform, that come into OpenShift Dedicated, OpenShift Online, and now OpenShift um, running on Azure, ARO. Um, I need to add one more logo here, and I'll get there. 
Um, and then we're uh, collaborating across streams. So not only are we pulling stuff in, but we're also pulling feedback in and integrations in from our partners, like Crunchy Data or um, NetApp or N NVIDIA. All kinds of people are contributing. So it's a two-way street that meets in the middle around OKD. And this is really how we end up delivering OpenShift itself. The product is taking things from the community, sharing back with them, and pushing it into our product offerings. But as I said, we do a lot of contribution now, not into that code base. We do it in all kinds of places, and uh, this gets updated and changed all the time. But um, we really are now at Red Hat focusing on contributing into the upstream. And there's, I think, 40 groups, special interest groups, different topics in Kubernetes. So if you're interested in contributing, my first call would be Think about it if you can contribute that into the Kubernetes project directly, then everyone benefits, and then we get the maintenance cycle of open source being maintained by the entire community. And it's really across all the different streams. It's all of the CNCF projects. There's new ones coming in all uh, every day. There's the operator framework that you're going to hear about a little bit from Gil Barrows today. Um, and how we're working with operators, which brings in another level and another whole group of people. Um, the operator hub.io is the open source um, repository or registry for all the operators. If you haven't seen that yet, please take a visit. If you've written an operator, how many in the room have written an operator? Uh, well, just a few of you, good. This is virgin territory. <laughs> We're going to get a few more of you to do that. Um, we are hoping that you will share them um, with the rest of the world, if you can. Um, some of them are probably enterprise specific, so behind your firewall. But if you're writing something, um, first look here to see if there's one. If you're doing Kafka or that, use one of those. Um, otherwise, um, take a, a whirl at finding the community that is also working on it and see if you can build it together. So I've, I have, as a community developer, a very rich data set to dive into. And um, I do a lot of diving. Um, this is a very scary Medusa. But um, if you think about all of these projects here, I'm just going to explain a little tiny bit about this and yeah, I'm doing time. Um, how this all works. So if you just take one project, like Jaeger, which is in the open tracing um, world, and you can see here, and I don't have, I don't think I have a, a laser touch here, do I? Um, the middle pieces, these are the people who are working on Jaeger um, and who are working on OpenShift. And those people up top, those three little dots up top, those are three human beings. Um, they actually are people that I can reach out to who are connected through all three of those projects. So if I'm looking for someone to talk, to, talk, to stand on the stage, because I love to share the podium, um, I can ask Jurassic, I can ask Greg Swift, or I can go find Julius, and they ought to know what the touch points are, or at least who I can connect with. And these are the people that you'll meet today. So, you know, they're not in the room today, but they're easily found um, through some of this network analysis work that we've been doing. Greg Swift, you can find him on Slack all the time. He used to work at Rackspace. He's gone to a company called LogDNA now. And if you join Commons and join the Slack channel, um, Greg is on there all the time answering questions. It's a, it's a, it's a great community to connect with. So Amadeus is in the room today, and I'm not doing you the best service here because I just have a small data set, but people like Amadeus and Salvatore, who will be speaking in a little bit, um, have done tons of um, talks at gatherings and shared their learnings, and progressively as they come in from new users to people who are experts on Kafka and all kinds of aspects of OpenShift and the ancillary projects, they um, have been doing lots of work, and so they have a great um, set of connections that you can meet today, too, along with SIA and Poste Italian. Um, there's lots of folks out there to meet and met. Met, and they'll meet you um, halfway. They'll help you um, and reach out to them, beat them today. Then there's also, I cut the, it's not an IBN, it's IBM. Slide it off here. But then there's also all of these new relationships. Is there anyone from IBM in the house today? 
ha, welcome, or you should be welcoming us, I guess, that's the way it was the reverse, but it feels like we're welcoming you into our community. So there's lots of connections too that have just expanded our network of people. So we're really th thrilled that you all came today. I know there's a few people wandering in now. It looks like we've almost run out of seats, so if you haven't, steal these five seats up front and fill them up because um, today is going to be a very interesting set of talks. We hope by the end of the day you'll figure out um, at least ten, six, four, it depends on how networky you Italians are, but hopefully ten new people. So that should be your goal for the day, is to meet people, not just from your own company, but from, other, from Red Hat, from the other companies here, and make a connection. Because that's really the most important thing to come out of today, is building community here in Italy and across the globe. Because it's really about connecting all of these dots, adding you to this picture, if you're not already here, um, and figuring out, um, as we like to say in Canada, where the hockey puck is going, what the next new project is, because we can see as people migrate into new things, what people connect to and what's of interest to them. And really, um, what I'm really going to ask you all today to do is be open to making new connections. So we're going to get started today. Um, my colleague um, Brian Gracely is here um, to give us a talk on open hybrid clouds or unified open hybrid clouds, depending on what the marketing spiel is today. So I really want to encourage you um, to come and join us today and we will um, get started. And I think I'm almost on time or maybe it's a little long, but quite, I think that's right dead center on time. So Brian, come on up and thank you all. You are um, probably the most well-dressed fashion week people that we've had ever at a community event. I'm told the Italians are um, best dressers in Europe, so um, you have not proven me wrong. So here we go. Good deal. Thank you, Diane. <laughs>